What's up, everybody? Joe Brown here. This is the Heresy Financial Show, and today we are going to be talking about how inflation wipes out debt and why inflation over the last couple of decades has not wiped out debt, but instead has made debt grow. And when we talk about moving into the future, into a higher inflationary period of time, whether it's five years, 10 years, however long it lasts, however high the inflation rate is, why it's going to be different than the last couple of decades, and why we are moving into a period where inflation will actually cause a deleveraging rather than a levering up like it has for the last couple of decades. Ready? Let's dive in. All right, guys, so I am going to be drawing here just a crude Monopoly board so that we can get an idea of what I'm talking about here. Monopoly is a great way to illustrate many uh, business things, many uh, uh, financial economic things, especially when we're talking about inflation and debt. So these are all the properties uh, on the Monopoly board. And let's just say the amount of money in the system is enough to where uh, each property is worth one dollar one unit of currency now in this game let's hypothetically assume that the uh, banker just decides randomly to double the supply of money well it's not it's going to take some time for the players to go around the board before that money works its way throughout the system but eventually every property then will be worth twice the amount that it was before right twice the number of units of currency now there's no more wealth in the system, right? That's the thing to uh, that's the thing to recognize here. The wealth is the number of properties that exist. The wealth is the uh, goods and services. So, the fact that each property is worth two dollars now instead of one dollar doesn't mean that people are richer. It just means that there's a different way to measure it now. The uh, units of currency are worth half as much as they were before, so it takes twice the amount of currency to measure the same amount of wealth. Nobody's better off. Uh, nobody's worse off. Um, as long as that money works its way out throughout the system evenly, which we know that it normally doesn't. But in this example, we've got the uh, properties now worth twice the amount of money. Now, this is Monopoly, right? And so uh, uh, in real life, what would happen here is as players go around the board, a lot of the players would be using debt to acquire the properties, right? And so let's say uh, half the properties had, uh, had debt uh, one unit of currency uh, of debt in order to finance the purchase of those properties. Well, as that new money works its way throughout the system, it makes it a lot easier to pay off that uh, old debt, right? Because new money comes in, so it's easier to get your hands on money to pay off that old debt. So hypothetically speaking, then you would see um, the uh, debt get erased as the new money works its way throughout the system and would wipe out the would offset the uh, new money that's coming into the system because it's being used to pay off the old debt. Now, why have we not seen something like that happen over the last couple of decades? We've seen both the money supply grow, and we've also seen the uh, the money supply has just basically grown like that. We've also seen the uh, amount of debt in the system just go like that. Uh, up and to the right. And uh, the amount of debt, this is uh, true of both uh, government, it's true of corporate debt, and it's true of household debt. All three uh, forms of, you know, all three big categories of debt have just gone through the roof. Now, the, the, the funny thing is, that's not what we see in uh, uh, countries and periods of time where the inflation rate gets really high. That's something that we see where the inflation rate is moderately high. But if the inflation rate is 20%, 30%, 50% a month, then we start to see uh, the uh, uh, debt load go down, not on a nominal basis, but on a real basis, the amount of debt compared to the amount of money, the amount of debt compared to the nominal GDP, however you measure it, the relative amount of debt goes down in a system. And so why, number one, why has the debt grown over the last couple of decades in the United States? One reason for this, like I said, the uh, 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 inflation rate has been nominal. And so lenders are willing, if uh, the inflation rate, let's say they believe is two or 3%, lenders are willing to lend at a little bit above that because when they get their money back, they're still getting a positive return even after accounting for inflation. If inflation as you know, if the cost of living is going up by 2%, but you're earning 3% as a lender, then you're still earning 1%. And so, 
As long as the lenders believe that over the course of the loan, they're getting a positive real return, they're willing to continue to lend that money. And that's exactly what has uh, happened over the last couple of decades. The uh, um, uh, official rate of inflation and really the real rate of inflation has been fairly nominal over the last couple of decades. It's, I believe it's been a lot higher than what uh, the official rate is, but still it hasn't been 10, 20, 30%. And um, when we look at what uh, borrowers want, obviously, when we go back to the example of the uh, Monopoly board, every single borrower on this board is going to want to borrow as much as they can because as the new money comes into the system, it becomes easier to pay that debt off and they get more wealthy because they're able to borrow money and then give it back later and they're able to use that to acquire more assets along the way. And so there's been a big demand uh, for borrowing by all of the borrowers. Now, we are moving into a time where we're getting closer to not hyperinflation yet, but we're getting closer to what we've seen very high inflation. And we can look at the extreme examples of hyperinflation like Weimar Germany, Lebanon, Argentina, Zimbabwe, Venezuela recently. We can look at all those examples to see what happens. And instead of the total debt load growing, uh, we see the total debt load declining because we start to see a deleveraging happen. The number one reason for this is because the inflation rate, uh, let me use the blue, the inflation rate goes through the roof and lenders can't get ahead of it. So if inflation over here is at 20% per month, um, they, they've had this curve the entire way and it used to be 10% a month. And so in, uh, lenders are gonna be looking at this and thinking, hey, it might be 30 soon. And so in order for them to lend, they're not gonna lend down here at 10, 20 or 30%. They're gonna demand way up there at 50% where they know that even if it takes a couple of months to get, their, uh, uh, get the loan repaid, they're not gonna get screwed on inflation by the time that loan gets repaid. They start to recognize what the real rate of inflation is and borrowing or lending dries up. Even though the demand for uh, borrowing goes up, the availability um, the availability uh, goes down because lenders don't want to get their uh, uh, purchasing power eroded by inflation. Now, the other thing that happens during this time, if you're not able to borrow more to pay off the old debt, um, and uh, your your uh, old debt is uh, you know was growing, old debt then uh, flatlines or new debt flatlines, and so the uh, rate of growth of debt in the system flatlines because nobody's able to roll over their debt. Nobody's able to get new debt because lenders dry up. They don't want to get screwed on uh, from inflation. So lending dries up, but the money supply continues to grow at an exponential pace. And so it becomes very easy to pay off that old debt. And so instead of debt just flatlining, let me erase this, instead of, you know, debt was growing like that, instead of debt growing and then flatlining, money supply grows, money works its way throughout the system, the money supply ends up uh, growing. And so the debt load goes from growing to flatlining to falling, it becomes very easy to pay off that old debt. An example of this is my grandparents bought their house, I don't know, how, however many decades ago, for uh, about 50000 or $75,000, something like that. They ended up selling it like 30 or 40 years later for about $600,000. Now, during that time, uh, the house didn't actually become worth that much more. That was just the nature of how much prices had increased by due to the inflation. Uh, due to the growth of the money supply uh, and uh, due to a little bit of a higher demand in the area. Uh, but ultimately, most of that was just due to inflation. And so when you when you are able to have, uh, you know, let's say they had a $30,000 mortgage, let's say $20,000 mortgage, um, and, uh, you know, let's say they still had that mortgage by the time that they were going to sell their house, they wouldn't have even had to sell their house. They would have just been able to take, you know, a portion of a year's salary and write a check to pay off their whole mortgage. And their salary wasn't, you know, abnormally high compared to uh, the average, and it never was. But because the new money supply works its way throughout the system, money becomes more abundant, it becomes easier to pay off uh, amounts that are locked in at those uh, low, lower, uh, older amounts before the new money was uh, in the system. And so that is how high inflation wipes out debt. 
And as you move into a period of higher and higher and higher inflation, that happens more and more and more and more. And while you get a deleveraging when you have high inflation, and over the last couple of decades, we've had an explosion in debt. We haven't had a deleveraging. We've had an, an explosion of uh, increasing leverage. But the fact of the matter is that deleveraging always happens. It's just a matter of when, not if. And we are looking like we are moving into a time period where high inflation is going to start wiping out debt. And so as at, at the time being, as long as it's still available, fixed rate debt becomes very valuable because you can uh, uh, you can lock in rates, you can lock in amounts at the current uh, value of money. And then later when money gets less valuable and more abundant, you can use that to pay off that old debt. Doesn't work that way for adjustable rate debt because that interest rate on the adjustable rate debt will continue to grow as long as that debt is outstanding and it will become harder and harder to pay off as the lender is able to demand more and more uh, to compensate themselves for the uh, uh, loss in purchasing power. So that is how inflation wipes out debt. Hope that makes sense. Hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.